Welcome to the era of precision medicine or personalized medicine, which is shaped by your genetic code under the science of pharmacogenomics, in short, PGX. In this video, we try to answer some of the key questions. The first one, what's a pharmacogenomics? And the second, how our gene variations can affect on drug response? And the third question, which will be answered, how our variation can affect on pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. And then, what are the main differences between pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics? Finally, the last question, what are the applications of pharmacogenomics? Let's see the first question. What's a pharmacogenomics? In short, PGX. Pharmacogenomics is a combination word. It consists of two different words, pharmaco and genomics. Pharmaco, it means drugs. And genomics, it means your genome. So pharmaco, it means pharmacy. It's the science that deals with what? Drugs. And genomics, it means genomics. It's the science that deals with or study the structure and function of your genes. Now, pharmacogenomics, it study the genetic variation of individuals and how this variation can affect on response for drugs. So the, it focuses on two main building blocks. It focuses on two main building blocks. PGX, it study the how variation of genes can affect on drug metabolism and drug efficacy, as well as adverse effects of drug reaction or adverse reaction of drugs. So, the main aim of this uh, pharmacogenomics, the main aim, the main aim of pharmacogenomics is to create personalized medicine in order to optimize treatment outcomes. So the patient outcomes can be optimized by creating personalized medicine through PGX and through focusing on metabolize of drugs and if drug efficacy as well as adverse reaction of drugs. Let's see how genetic variations of individuals can affect on their response to drugs. Now, what's a variation? What's a variation? Variation is uh, changes, changes of DNA sequences, DNA nucleotides. This is the variation. It means sometimes we can say a mutation. So variation, it has several types. In general, we can say there are three main types. The firstly uh, is called point mutation or single nucleotide polymorphism. Single nucleotide polymorphism. And the second is called structural variation. Structural variation. And the third part is called copy number variation copy number variation. So the single nucleotide polymorphism, it means only one nucleotide can be changed on the uh, DNA sequences. Whereas the second and the third one, structural variation or copy number variation takes place at the level of chromosome. The first, it will take place, it will take on the level of gene. Only one nucleotide can be changed. Whereas structural variation, it includes 
deletion, insertion, translocation. These are the types of structural variation. A big change can be take play, took place in this DNA or chromosomal level, chromosomal structure. Copy number variation. Copy number variation, it means a sequence, a big sequence can be copied. It means the chromosome has several, several copies of a single sequences. So it's called copy number variation. These are, these are three main parts of uh, variation. As I said, the first at the level of the gene, and the second and third one will be uh, took place at the level of chromosome, which is a big change, which is a big change. Now, the third question, how, how DNA variation, DNA sequence variation can affect on both pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Firstly, we have to know what's a pharmacokinetics and what's a pharmacodynamics. What are the differences between these two keywords? First, pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics, pharmaco, it means drugs. Kinetics, kinetics, it means movement. Movement, it means drug movement. So, what body does to the drug? What the cells do to the drug? Pharmacokinetics, drug movement. Whereas pharmacodynamics, pharmacodrug, dynamics, it means effects, it means power of drug. So, drug power, drug effects. Pharmacokinetics, it includes drug absorption and drug distribution and drug metabolize, then exclusion, exclusion or elimination of drugs. In short, it, it, it includes ADMI. ADMI. A, absorption, absorption. D, distribution. M, metabolize, then elimination of drugs. So, this is the pharmacokinetics. What about pharmacodynamics? Pharmacodynamics, it means what, what drugs do for our body what drugs do for our cells. So, effect of drugs, biological effect, physical effect, mechanism of drugs, effect, drug effects, these are called pharmacodynamics. Pharmacodynamics. So, variation in our gene, it affects on both pharmacokinetics, it means it affects on drug absorption, drug uh, distribution, uh, drug uh, metabolize of drugs, and also elimination of drugs. And it affects on the mechanism of action of drugs. Now, let's see some examples how variation can affect on drug metabolism and uh, so on, or how it affects on drug effects. This is one of the examples. At the first one, which, 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 which we said uh, single nucleotide polymorphism, point mutation. There's a gene on the chromosome 22. This gene is called cytochrome gene, psi P2D6 gene. And this gene, it has exonic region, intronic region, as well as promoter region. So, the point mutation in uh, most of the cases doesn't bring the limitation or a big change in our uh, body. Uh, just the, the, there is a recent study showed that there are at least 10 million, 10 million uh, single nucleotide polymorphism can be seen in your body, but we are still normal one. The only one, if the mutation, if the mutation takes place in exonic region, which is responsible for coding protein, for uh, synthesizing of mRNA, or 
if the uh, mutation, this change, single nucleotide polymorphism, take place in the promoter region, it affects on the last product, uh, which is called protein or enzymes. But if the changes take place in the interregion, intergenic sequences or intronic regions, these are, in most of the cases, uh, doesn't make any sense. Now, this gene, it normally, it produces mRNA, and the mRNA produces a specific enzyme, which is called CYP2D6 enzyme. So this enzyme has two main functions. Two main functions. Firstly, it meta it at least around 25% of metabolizing and eliminating of drugs. It is responsible for 25% of drug metabolism and drug elimination or drug excretion. This is the first function of this gene. And the second one, this enzyme also, it in some in some of the prodrugs, prodrugs, it is responsible for converting prodrug into active drug, such as codeine. By the help of this enzyme, it converted into active form, which is morphine. Now let's see if the mutation takes place in this gene. The if point mutation takes place, point mutation takes place in these genes, it leads to reduce the enzymatic activity. And finally, finally it brings a it brings a difficulty in drug metabolism or uh, in drug excretion. As we said, it's responsible for metabolizing at least 25% of clinical drugs. So in some of the patients, the drug metabolism, it leads to increasing. Increasing the drug metabolism, it leads to also increasing the elimination of uh, drugs quickly. So in here, it means the efficacy of drugs reduce it. And in the, some of the cases, it leads to reduce the drug metabolism. Reducing of drug metabolism, it brings or it increases the toxic products. So this is how the point mutation can affect on drug metabolism and drug action. This is a single point mutation. Let's see the second, the second example. The second example, which is a big change at the level of the chromosome. For example, this is structural variation. Structural variation. Structural variation. It means a big change, a big change in the DNA sequence. Now, in the human brain cells, there is a chromosome. On the chromosome 17, we have a specific gene which is called serotonin transporter gene. The serotonin transporter gene responsible for synthesizing a specific protein which has 630 amino acids. And this protein is called serotonin transporter protein. Serotonin transporter protein. The serotonin transporter protein has a key function in the regulation of serotonin level in the brain cells. Now, how? In the uh, nerve cells, for example, the presynaptic cells, presynaptic cell, the first cell, which is called presynaptic cell, by the action potential, increasing sodium, it means adding sodium, adding calcium, it means increasing the positive charge, and the action potential leads to release of serotonin in the vesicles. So the serotonin serotonin releases into a synaptic cleft into this area. This is a serotonin released from the vesicles and some of the 
uh, serotonin molecules by the help of receptor protein transfer or uh, transferred into co-synaptic uh, neuron cells. So the first cell which sends a signal called presynaptic cell. And the second neuron cell which accepts which accept the molecules or accept the serotonin is called co-synaptic neuron uh, cell. So by the help of this protein, serotonin transporter protein, it leads to regulate the regulate the amount of serotonin, the level of serotonin in the synaptic cleft in this area. When the serotonin increased in here in the synaptic cleft, some of them it releases outside by the diffusion, whereas the remaining, the serotonin transporter protein, reuptake. Reuptake, it binds from here. Reuptake through this pathway, it can regulate the level of serotonin between uh, neuron cells. But what happens if the structural changes takes place in this gene? Let's see. The gene, just like other cells or other genes in other cells, it has the intron region, hexonic region, and also the promoters. In opposite to the point mutation, which we uh, discussed uh, before, the changes take place in here, in the pro uh, promoter sequences. So the structural variation, it means insertion or deletion or translocation of the DNA sequences. Always it takes place at the level of the chromosome, it means a big change. So the repetitive sequences takes place in the promoter region. The promoter already, it has TAT, Tata box, thiamine adenine, thiamine adenine. It reaches to with, the, with these nucleotides, but in the uh, some of the patients, it contains GC repeats, cytosine and guanine. If it contains 14 uh, CG, it means the gene expressed very low. Whereas if the GC increased up to 16 or more than 16 uh, GC, it leads to expression or highly expression of this gene. In both cases, it leads to disturbance in the serotonin level. And finally, it brings a cyto, uh, psychiatric disease. It leads to anxiety disorders. So this is results of structural variation in a specific gene which is called serotonin transporter gene. How the structural variation affects on the serotonin uh, excretion or serotonin level uh, regulation. Now, finally, the last question, what are the pharmacogenomics application? The applications of pharmacogenomics, it means firstly, precision medicine, personalized medicine, drug development, then predicting uh, drug uh, response, and also reducing the side effects of the drug and managing diseases such as cancer or other infectious disease. Finally, we can conclude that the pharmacogenomics focuses on the precision medicine, personalized medicine. And the main aim of personalized medicine is to give the right dose of the right drug for the right indication for the right patient at the right time should be prescribed or should be given. And thank you. Thanks for your sharing, likes, and all your comments. Have a good day.